All right, so I'm going to show you how you can take an object that you have created and transfer it into, export it from Tinkercad and transport it to SculptGL. So once you're logged into Tinkercad and you've created some sort of project, what you're going to do next is you are going to select the project and go to tinker this. Now, if you've already have it, have it opened, then um, it's gonna be a little easier for you because then you can just work directly from your opened file. I'm gonna go over to, um, so here it is, the hand. I'm gonna go over to export. And when I click on export, it gives me a few options. Now we want to export it as an STL because we're gonna be 3D printing this, or we will be 3D printing future um, projects. So click on STL. It will give you whatever name it gave you from uh, Tinkercad or you can rename it. And make sure it's, or you know what, yours is probably gonna look a little different from mine because you're working on a Chromebook. But once it's saved, um, just take note of where it's saving to. And then you're gonna go and open up SculptGL. So here for SculptGL, I have something that's already there. I have a sphere here. And every time you open up SculptGL, it's always going to have something in the scene already. So I need to go up to the top left where it says scene and I need to clear the scene. When I do that, you can press on OK and it's deleted it. The next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and go up to File. And now I'm going to import a file. So if I go down to Import and it says Add Object SGL, which is the um, SculptGL file, PLY and STL, I'm going to click here. And now I can see there it is, Hans. I'm going to open it up. And my hand is there. Now you can adjust what, you know, where this is. You'll notice that I still have symmetry on there. Sometimes you need to rotate it to get the proper symmetry. Um, but before I start sculpting, there's a few things that I want you to play with. Uh, first off, it's going to come in looking super duper smooth. And then when you start to shape things, you're going to notice things aren't looking quite right. So if I um, turn off symmetry and I start to drag things, you'll see that it's going to go ooh, all over, right? So, um, what I'm going to do is I want to show you why that's happening. So in here, uh, under rendering, you'll see at the top, at the bottom of that, um, toolbar, you'll see flat shading and wireframe. If I click on flat shading, you'll see it'll look very much like how it looked in Tinkercad. It stops smoothing it out. And then you can also do a wireframe if you want. Now, when you do a wireframe, you can see that's why when I stretched it, it did all kinds of weird things. It's because you have edges and you have vertices here. The edges are basically constraining where everything is. And then the vertices, these are the little points that you can grab onto and pull. So you can actually be very specific. You can zoom in really close and you can only manipulate certain points if you want to. Um, now, say that you want to take this and um, it's got a very low resolution right now. So say you want it to be a little more intricate. So what you would do for this I'm actually going to um, hide that and open up topology. When I open up topology, what I can do is I can change the resolution. So right now, the standard resolution it puts it at is 150. If I click on remesh, what's going to happen is you'll see that the wireframe has subdivided and added a whole bunch of new planes. Now, if I manipulate these planes, you'll see that I end up having a little bit more control and it's not as wrinkled looking as it was before. Um, now, 
be careful because every time that you change the resolution, you're slowing it down. For the higher the resolution, the slower the program will work. And then also you can't go back. So if I move the resolution down and I click on remesh, you'll see that I've lost a lot of my form. So I'm going to go ahead and undo that. Before you ever move on to um, a new resolution, you want to first save your file. So I'm going to show you how to do that in SculptGL. So if I go up to Files, you'll see that there's Export. If for Export, you can go down to Save STL. Remember, SGL is only good in SculptGL. We don't want to use that. STL with the T for toy is what we want to use. So if I click on STL, then I can, it'll save it. Um, I usually make sure that it's saved as like a one, two, three, four, because I, generally speaking, you want to start with the lowest resolution, which is why we started in Tinkercad. And then you want to increase the resolution and change the forms um, during that process. Now, if this is really annoying to you that it is um, in the middle of the plane like this, you can move your piece. And if you have multiple parts, you can move them by going into the Sculpting and Painting tab and going down to um, Transform. When you do transform, you're going to see that there are some arrows, there's some cubes, and then there are some circles. What you can do is the circles will actually rotate. Oops, I clicked on the wrong one. The circles will actually rotate. The cubes will resize, give you whatever size you want. And then the arrows will move everything. So if you want to lay this flat, you can. Uh, just keep in mind that you're going to change your symmetry if you do that. So um, it's best to kind of align it with your symmetry and work with your sim uh, symmetry as much as you can if you need some symmetry. Obviously, my piece isn't going to need symmetry. Um, so that is how you create it. You save it, you import, export, um, all that good stuff. Now, because SculptGL always just automatically, when you exit, it loses everything, um, and you come in with a sphere, you need to save it before you leave SculptGL every single time. Um, and then once again, save it as a new file whenever you change your topology, the resolution for it. You can play around with these different things and learn a little bit about what all of these things do. Uh, for example, you can change the um, the skin on it and create all kinds of different fun things. You can um, get rid of the wireframe if it's annoying you and you can't see your design. Um, you can relax the topology whenever you remesh. So it'll give you a slightly different shape or slightly different form when it um, remeshes. And um, you can play with your tools too, see what you can do. Um, you can get something like this to look like a very, very real hand, um, starting with these techniques and saving along the way. So there you have it. Thank you for watching, and I hope that you enjoyed.